In recent years, organizations have been increasing remote working capability. COVID lockdowns accelerated that process hugely. We saw almost every company adopting Zoom and Webex to enable their staff to work from home. But just how much risk come along with remote working? Are companies doing enough to put the right security in place to stay cyber safe as they switch to remote working? At Cybersecurity ASEAN, we feel that many companies are not aware of the risk and are not doing enough to protect themselves and their workers. We decided to run an experiment to put this to the test. We call this the Evil Twin Experiment. An Evil Twin is where a cyber criminal creates a public Wi-Fi access that seems legitimate. For instance, if they are in Coffee Shop X, they set up the Wi-Fi access point as Coffee Shop X, free Wi-Fi, and trick customers to connecting. Cybersecurity ASEAN Zul Husni check out how easy it is to set up one of the Evil Twin network. Remote working is not just about working from home, of course. Um, your remote workers may want to choose to work at their co-working spaces, at cafes, or basically any public areas that give a good Wi-Fi connection. And because of that, um, it makes them an easier target for cyber criminals to take advantage of. So, why is using public Wi-Fi for remote working not safe for businesses? We're actually going to be running an experiment at a nearby cafe with Barracuda Networks expert Muhammad Fadli on this. We set up an evil twin Wi-Fi on our laptop using our own device to mirror the free Wi-Fi provided. We removed the password request and waited to see how many will actually fall victim to this. An evil twin is a fraudulent Wi-Fi access point that appears to be legitimate but is set up to eavesdrop on wireless communications. The evil twin is the wireless LAN equivalent of the phishing scam. This type of attack may be used to steal the passwords of unsuspecting users either by monitoring their connections or by phishing, which involves setting up a fraudulent website and luring people there. To our surprise, in just under an hour, we had five users with mobile devices and laptops connecting to our Wi-Fi. We can actually, uh, we just created um, an evil twin about a few minutes ago and we can see that a um, few people actually joined our evil twin that we just created. So uh, what do you think and like, what, what do you think that cyber criminals can actually do with this information? Like how, are, how can they utilize the information that they can get from this? Um, okay, so uh, this is a very good first step that what you're doing, you know, uh, creating a almost similar type of SSID being broadcast from this uh, uh, restaurant uh, just to capture of how many users can get connected, right? So the idea of what attacker try to do with Evil Twins is to, to create uh, a mimic, you know, to mimic uh, the Wi-Fi infrastructure, especially public Wi-Fi, um, and in order to launch a man-in-the-middle sort of attack, right? And, and when we talk about men in the middle, this is the, the whole way of how attacker try to get you know, user credentials, um, uh, any critical information that they can use uh, for, for user to log into a certain critical sort of applications like banking accounts and so forth. So, so there's, there's a lot of things that actually can be damaging mm -hmm. from this very sort of uh, attacks that was launched by attacker. Um, um, the, the thing is, getting the account is the very first step, and this is one of the way to, to get those, uh, informati uh, those, those critical information. Mm -hmm. uh, what happened is, once they got that, then that's where they executed other attacks, you know, uh, doing wire transfer, uh, and, and, and there will be more managing, uh, damaging effects uh, from where attacker can bring this forward. Uh, but this is a, a great sort of first step of how attacker can fish, you know, it's, it's sort of fishing. And just like how uh, attacker fish uh, uh, launch a phishing attacks through email campaign, but this is through uh, public Wi-Fi infrastructure. Oh, okay. And and there's a lot more concern now because now we are working from home uh, under this COVID sort of environment, and and we know no people can allow to go and work anywhere, uh, and and that's 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 the concern that we need to kind of uh, brought forward and make people aware, you know, uh, what's happening out there, what could possibly be uh, done by the attacker. You know? mm -hmm. Yeah, you made a really good point there, like, um, explaining this stuff. So, what can actually users um, do to protect themselves from actually being breached or something like that? Um, okay, so um, speaking from uh, from uh, I mean, I work in in the IT industry, you know, especially from uh, for for cyber security space. But then again, um, we take uh, we take a look at ourselves as a general, you know, uh, normal users. 
normal consumers who actually go to coffee shops, buy coffees and so on. So security is all about awareness, making yourself aware if there's any uh, 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 unusual sort of uh, uh, feelings that you feel that you see reacted from what are the things that you usually do, right? So, so first of all, uh, my advice and I, for, for a lot of like, uh, people out there, especially for public people, uh, make sure that you always consult the owner of the infrastructure. You know, we talk about these restaurants, ask them what is the SSID of these restaurants, is there any passwords or not, right? That would then be the first step of them identifying whether they're connecting to a, to a bogus Wi-Fi connection or they, they're connecting to the right one published by the, by the premise owner. Secondly, never do any uh, critical service transaction over the public infrastructure. We talk about uh, logging into your bank account, uh, logging into anywhere that could, you, you could probably be doing a, a monetary sort of transfer like uh, logging into touch and go portals. Those are all critical portals which ties up to your you know, uh, uh, bank accounts or uh, any means of wiring transactions and, and avoid uh, altogether from assessing all these critical app uh, applications uh, from assessing it through public infrastructure, right? And then, and then, uh, third one, we talk about you know um, uh, now there's a lot more organization, especially banking. So we we take example as banking, they ask you to do multi-factor authentications. You know, uh, when you log into your accounts, you still require for them to verify certain code before you can actually complete a certain transaction. So that way, it gives attacker a little bit more you know step further and make it more harder for them even if they manage to steal certain credentials, but they won't be able to hijack your phone because of the multi-factor sort of authentication. And, and probably last but not least, it's, it's all about you know, um, making aware of ourselves what's happening in around security. Right? Um, uh, again, I always like to, to, to repeat this, security is all about awareness. Uh, we make aware of ourselves what's happening. Right? That's, that's pretty much how we secure ourselves. It's the same way as how we cross the, the road. Before you cross the road, you check on your right, you check on your left. That's the same thing pretty much when we talk about, you know, uh, doing transactions online or whatnot. So we need to have that, 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 that awareness, you know, make ourselves aware of what, what's happening around us. Um, and and, and that, that could probably stop us from, you know, making any mistakes along the way. Well, that was a really interesting, but no big surprise. In under one hour, we have five people connect to our evil twin network. Of course, we were just experimenting and immediately shut off the connection each time. But if we had been real cyber attackers, here are just a few of the things we could have done once we got people to connect. Cyber criminals can set up a fake internet access login page and ask you to set login details. Because many people reuse the same password, they capture this detail and see if they can use it to get into your account. They can track you where you are browsing and start to build a profile on you for future attacks. It's even possible that they can analyze your network traffic and actually capture details of password you enter to other sites. Worst case, they can use the connection to find a backdoor into your computer and plant malware or spyware on your machine, which can be used to track you long after you got out from the evil twin Wi-Fi point. If you are thinking that this is a fun experiment, but it won't happen to me, think again. Cybercrime is a big business and cyber criminals are out there looking for easy target. You need to be aware of the tactics they use and make sure you take simple measures to protect yourself. In the case of an evil tweet, just educating your staff and putting some policies in place about remote Wi-Fi access almost eliminates the risk. If you want to know more about how to protect yourself, your users, when they access public Wi-Fi, download this great guide. We wrote on why and how Wi-Fi can open your business to cyber threats. I'm Ridwan from Cybersecurity ASEAN. Stay safe and goodbye everyone.